food is a lot more approachable. Barbecue can be super rich and bold, but if you present it properly and you have the right types of sides and you balance everything out, just learn as you go. We want to show, and I think we've proven, we can hold our own with the best of them. Everybody says live up to the hype, right? It does have to live up to the hype, which I think that we do here. <laughs> When we opened in 2020, we got the Orange County Register, we got Best New Restaurant, and the, the next year we got Best Restaurant in Orange County. And then we got in the uh, New Discovery for the Michelin Guide, and then a few months later we got the uh, Big Gourmand. It's, it's awesome. I think uh, Michelin has been starting to realize that this is a respectable craft and we're, we're being recognized for that. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, I can argue that it's a lot harder work than you know, being in a fine dining restaurant. Is it like pretty hard to like wake up this early in the morning? It was, it definitely is. You know what, even after doing it for a few years, it was still, still hard to get up sometimes this early. Morning shift when we first opened the restaurant in 2020, um, August, during quarantine. And then, yeah, that weekend I, I, was the, I started up morning shift and I've been doing it pretty much ever since. Working on three years this August. <laughs> That's when you know it's clean, huh? <laughs> so this morning we're gonna start on some briskets, our Creekstone Farm briskets. We're gonna go 20 of them just for tomorrow, but nothing too big. And we're also gonna be smoking pork shoulders that'll go on. Kind of build a little walk in some briskets. Yeah, that's smart. Those, yeah. those pork butts can take a lot of heat. Yeah, exactly. That's They're nice. way more forgiving. Instead of doing a blocking log, you got a pork butt line. That's, yeah. that's actually really smart. <laughs> yeah, Chris, is uh, he's just got such a great attitude. He's a very hard worker. He's proven himself to be super valuable to the team. He's somebody I truly entrust with, you know, our name, which, you know, Heritage is, might as well be my last name. You know, it's something that hold near and dear, so. It's a really gentle, gentle fire. You don't want every piece of wood combusting all at once. Because what you're really gonna create is, is it's gonna be more of a convectional heat. You're not gonna get as much smoke. Uh, one thing that we're really proud of is just getting those offsets that you saw out there, NSF certified for food use, which we're very happy to say that, you know, that we were the first and which opened the doors for everybody else that you see in California that's that's doing um, Texas style barbecue. Well, the brisket's looking pretty damn good. Yeah, they are. That's what we want right there. That's exactly what we want. I am the butcher here at Heritage Barbecue, so I take care of all protein that comes through this restaurant. It's all encompassing. It's saving bones for stock, making sausage, rendering tallow, taking care of all the grind for sausage, burgers, anything else, any other daily specials. Every piece of protein goes through my hands at this place. Lennon started with us for three years as well. Very talented guy. Creativity is something that like he excels at. I was a butcher for going on four years at a retail butcher shop, working whole animal. So using the entire animal for a retail and culinary purpose. You know, here we like to do things a little differently and so you know I could bring them up get a hog in and tell them to you know completely take it apart and and you know hey make pate with this and do that with that and make sausage with this. It's crazy how you can do that without even looking. Yeah well it's you know it's that muscle memory once you have the tension build up and everything mm -hmm. it's not gonna go much elsewhere you can if you put on a little more tension there's the risk of it rupturing, for sure. You can feel when it's about to do that. Yeah, you, you know, it. you don't want to over twist them anyway, because there's going to be swelling and shrinking when it cooks. Mm. And the guy is so fast. He is fast. Crazy fast, yeah. It's that muscle memory. Just doing it over and over again. Aside from that, put on a good album and find your zone and work through it. Well, we use it mostly for like add-on brisket, so like if it's a chopped brisket sandwich or something. Like okay, that. got it. Is that going on today as well? Um, I believe they are throwing it on today, yeah.
So right now we have our pork belly char siu. Uh, the char siu is actually marinated for about three, maybe maybe four days before we uh, before I pull it out and I season it and we'll throw it on. Is that sugar or like a mix? It's a mix. Okay. Yeah, it has brown sugar in it, Chinese five spice, a uh, few different things. It's gonna be a about 10 to 12 hour cold smoke. We're gonna get mopped in um, this marinade, this mop sauce that we make up. So how did they make the menu or has it always been like a staple on the heritage menu? Um, you know, we, we just, we added it on pretty early, but our pork belly char siu is something that we add as a staple pretty much at this point. It's always on the menu. That'll be pork belly for the week right there. It's not really necessarily like a straight Texas style barbecue, but we are definitely inspired by the Southwest, but we take like a modern approach to our craft barbecue. My barbecue journey started in the backyard. We spent a lot of time in the backyard just cooking. So um, I had not been trained or taught. I remember one time cooking a brisket and a pork butt together and pulling them out at the same time. And you know, you, you burp, you could taste it like the next day. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how, <laughs> but everybody around me uh, said that they loved it, so. Got some mad color on there. Mm hmm Do we like to see? Ooh, that towel just fucking going down. There's definitely a lot of history here in this town. When we were doing construction here, we had to have an archaeologist be here and a native monitor. Because anytime that they put a shovel or a backhoe into the ground, um, had to be dumped out and examined. Actually, Chris Granado, I think you got to meet him. That's how we came to cross paths. He actually worked here as a monitor. Uh, my shift is uh, I'm kind of just watching the brisket, wrapping brisket, wrapping the pulled pork. It's good to always have somebody that like comes from the community and none of us are from this area. So he's been almost like an ambassador to heritage here in this town. Yeah, he's with us, man. He's, he's, a, he's a lifer and he, he loves what we do. He's probably like one of our biggest supporters here in San Juan. <laughs> it's changing all the time as far as technique wise. You know, we're always trying to improve. Always trying to improve, especially when it comes to the brisket. He cares tremendously about everything. And if something doesn't come out right for whatever reason, he takes it very personally. Yeah, every every cook is different, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, when when it's ready to come off. The key thing is actually the feel of the brisket. I think the side is still a little tight. Still a little tight, so we have a little bit. Well, I'm going to go another eight minutes, five eight minutes. We sound more brisket than any other protein. So still our bread and butter. I'm just not too happy with that, that mushy part of on that plant right there. That part, that's the only thing I was afraid of when I opened that one up. <laughs> He's one of those guys that'll come in in the morning and say like, while they're cutting the first brisket, like how's, how's brisket cutting and He's been a he's a, been a valuable guy for us here, especially within the community. So where did the Heritage Barbecue name come from? Uh, so when we first started out, uh, Nicholas and I, our executive chef, he came up with that name. Nicholas just thought it would be a, a great name for something that we, we can express like where we came from and uh, give some love to our roots and our ancestors. At the, at the mission, I always be here in the morning. I always joke around like, Fuck, one of those kids got loose. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty big difference from yesterday to today. Yesterday, we yeah, we were cold. We were smoking brisket and um, pork belly, and yeah. It, 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 there was no time frame yesterday. Today we have to have stuff ready for service. So it's a little bit more of a, of, a, of a jump in your step. We have pork ribs going on. 
We have chicken on, we have briskets on. Even though, yeah, it's a couple more proteins that we're getting ready, but we're, they have to be ready for service. Nonetheless, you know, we're still keeping things going. Not really pushing things too crazy. You know, we, we still want things to come out, right? My guys that I have in the kitchen, most of them have these really cool fine dining backgrounds. They're true chefs. They make these amazing dishes. Even though we have the, the new restaurant open and I'm, I can't be here all the time, I still get to see these things that they put out every day and they just blow my mind, you know, when I get to see these specials that they put out. About eight o'clock, we'll end up wrapping our pork ribs up. And, and aluminum foil. So, bro, they were gonna need you all week, you know me? <laughs> and then we'll let them go for about an hour. And in about 20 minutes, we're gonna throw on tri tips. Uh, we sell a lot of tri tip here. That's kind of a untraditional item for Texas barbecue. It's, it's uniquely Californian, so uh, we actually like to smoke, cold smoke our, our tri tip, and then we finish them over live fire on the mill scale. The before. <laughs> We've had friends that moved out to Texas, so we started um, making these trips out there to eat barbecue. That's kind of what really got my interest sparked in, in doing um, Texas-style barbecue. We did pop-ups at breweries for about three years before we got our brick and mortar. The pandemic hit and you know, not being able to get a lot of the proteins that we needed to run a barbecue restaurant, we started to get really creative and that's when we started bringing in a lot more vegetable dishes, things that were at a better price. So these vegetables are for the salad? Yes. Okay. This is a hot box asparagus that we put or incorporated in. Morgan is awesome. Morgan came to us, I think about a year into operating. But yeah, he's a very, very talented chef. He cares about what he does and he's a great leader. Personally, I think he excels in like doing those things that we want to do. Uh, more here, which is like working with vegetables and like smoking vegetables and grilling vegetables and doing these composed dishes with them. My in-laws are vegan. A lot of inspiration from plant-based cooking. If you give vegetables the same amount of time and attention that you do to meat, it tastes just as good. It can be the, the center of any dish. That's, that's somebody who I think uh, a lot of people look up to and uh, just his work ethic is something that I think a lot of people gravitate towards him and they, like everybody kind of wants to work like Morgan because he's so good at working, you know? Chef Nick has created quite the, uh, the kitchen here. It's like no other kitchen I've been in where if, you know, everybody wants to say that they're family and this place they really treat you that way to where, you know, you might have a blow up, pull out with one kitchen, kids cook one day, settle our differences and get working. It doesn't matter how long this, this line will go down the block and it will never end until we sell out. Yeah. And he keeps it light and he keeps it fun. Yeah, no stress. He's not Driving. throwing shit, he's not yelling. Yeah. We're open to the public Wednesday, opening at 11 a.m. We could get everything pretty much done about 30 minutes before we open. Can't just like videotape it, not try it. Did you really put it in his mouth? No, no, no. Oh, man, I, I was thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. That shot would have been amazing. That's a love shot, man. Right? You know what I mean? It's the million views right there. Yeah. He's like, when I was doing this, he put it in my mouth. He didn't even ask me. We do things like tacos and we do um, banmis and we do, you know, masubis and all these other sorts of things. and just a big melting pot and so like that's what that's what ends up coming out in our food and, uh, and that's that's what kind of where we're at right now. Those tacos, normales, aquí, y uh, chico frijoles, chico mac. Todos, todos aquí. We always have the sense of urgency in what we're doing. We go about it in a timely manner. There's some places that they're unnecessarily slow, and that might be that they just want to have a longer line for whatever reason. They like the look of it. I think we just want to give them an all-around good experience. And if you just have like, if you're efficient, your food's good, and this and that, like, they shouldn't need to wait that long. Oh my gosh! Yeah, just right here. All right. Well, 
little trip around the world that we've got here. We've got the spares, are done with the white oak and with hickory now. We, do, we use a, a mixture of both of them. It's brought out a really nice sweetness in, in the pork. We've got the tri-tip you saw char charring off earlier today. Today's sausage is a spicy Italian. Char siu belly is right underneath there. Banana pudding, make the custard every morning fresh. Sausage mac today, and it's got our Texas hot link that's ground up in there. We have our brisket beans as well. And then one of our uh, sandos that our Chef Max puts together is our chimmy aioli sando. And then the Cindy salad, which you saw getting built up earlier. So I really hope you enjoy, man. We got the fixings, I'm gonna go get you some sauces. And awesome, then you're set. thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you. it. I would love for everybody to work here for the rest of their lives, you know, <laughs> to see like my team happy, to see them smiling, to see them, you know, joking around, working as a team, working as a family. They take pride in their work. Being able to have something that I love to do and share it with everybody. We want people to come back pretty often. We want them to feel like they were in a family backyard barbecue. That's what we want to send them away with. An amount of hospitality and like friendliness that making people feel good. Even if they were waiting a long time in line, nine times out of 10 when they're leaving, but they're in a really great mood. I think that's what we strive for here. That's so good.